gang. Let's talk about what's going on, what this is all about, what Russia's all about, what China's all about. Okay, in terms of economics, in terms of growth, in terms of trade. Okay, I just want to show you guys this because this really ties into what's going on here. Okay, I'm going to bring up a couple of maps. I'm going to stop reading the chat because I get caught up with all this stuff. Right, let me show you this. Okay, here's a map of and I sized it really small so it fits on our map, right? This is called the International North-South Transport Corridor, right? So right now what we have, goods that are being sold to Asia, China, stuff like this, and are being exported out of there, or the ones that are coming to Europe, have their route coming through this area red sea going through the suez canal coming into here that includes energy oil gas whatever right now what's happened with israel is yemen has stepped in and says no israeli ships no uk ships no american ships going through the suez canal right and egypt is in civil war right so and this takes a fair bit of time to go through right so a lot of ships are now being diverted here to go around to go to Europe right so what we have right now is China spearheading this thing saying look we need to build better transportation better trade routes where we the majority of the world right because because the majority of the world lives here, right? China, 1.3 billion people. India, let's say 1.3 billion people. There's like 8 billion people in the world. Together, 3 billion people. You got uh, Indonesia, you got Malaysia, you got South Korea, you got Japan, you got uh, Pakistan, Iran. You, you, you guys do the math, right? But half the world's population at least lived lives in this region and they're growing economically growth galore growth galore right and until five years ago almost a hundred percent of trade in the world was being done with the u.s dollar right the u.s petrodollar and the reason they called the u.s petrodollar was because in the early 1970s the united states cut a deal with saudi arabia saying that we'll militarily back you up make sure no one touches you and you'll stay in power forever if you only sell your oil in the u.s dollar because at that time nixon took the u.s dollar off the gold standard officially right it was taken off the gold standard before that but officially it was taken off the gold standard and the united states needed something to back the u.s dollar other than military might and they turned to saudi arabia because nice oil they said you guys only sell oil in u.s dollars we'll back you up and the petrodollar was created and anybody that wanted to buy saudi oil and they really control opec so anybody that really wanted to buy oil needed to trade in the u.s dollar right now in the last year saudi arabia has come out and said they're selling oil outside of the u.s dollar right china has come out and said hey what they did to russia is unacceptable which is kicking off the swift system where russia could not trade us dollars they froze their bank accounts multiple sanctions up the yin yang and the only reason this became unacceptable what they did to russia is because russia is a powerhouse right because it's the same thing that the western world did to venezuela remember in the uk they seized venezuelan gold right western governments united states uk europe canada they came out and said oh there was elections in venezuela irrelevant if you think they're legit or not doesn't fucking matter right venezuela had elections maduro was elected and the western powers came out and said we don't recognize that president we're going to put 
Juan Guaido, some Joe Blow coke snorting motherfucker. Just like Zelensky, right? Just like most of the puppets, Trudeau, same shit, right? It's, it's, it's the same type of person. They said we recognize them as the legitimate leader of Venezuela, and that gave them the excuse to seize Venezuelan assets, gold, the oil company they had, the gas stations they had in the United States and everything, property, right? They took over Venezuelan embassies in the United States because they came out and said, this cokehead is, the official, we officially recognize him as the leader of Venezuela. They even brought him to the Senate Congress, the Congress, and they allowed him to speak or they gave him a standing ovation. I'm not sure if he was allowed to speak or not because he was probably too coked up, right? They did that to Venezuela. On Iran, they've had multiple sanctions, hundreds of sanctions for the last 40 years. But the world still decided to continue to trade in the U.S. dollar because that's Iran. This is Venezuela. All Cuba they've done since the 1950s blockading. They're not, well, Iran is extremely powerful now. But at the time, they weren't as powerful, or Iran wasn't as powerful, right? Not even close. If you take Iran, Venezuela, Cuba together, and all the sanctions they put on every other country, that's the power there doesn't even compare to what Russia is, right? So United States, in their infinite stupidity, the Western world, decided that they're going to do, try to do to Russia what they've done to Iran, Venezuela, Cuba, and any other country they put sanctions on. Guess fucking what? What a fucking mistake. Right, what a fucking mistake. The rest of the world didn't go by this. They said, no, we won't abide by this. They went around it, right? And the sanctions in Russia have completely, they're, they're, not, they're not gone, but completely failed. So as soon as they did this to Russia and Russia didn't collapse, China said, rock and roll, rock and roll, right? Russia said, that's right, baby. Let's get together and party. And they did. Fucking building bonds solid. You cannot break this shit. Right? So Russia and China are really acting as one major mega power that makes Europe and the United States working together look like fucking peons. Liter literally, really peons. Right? India is in, Malaysia is in, Iran is in, Saudi Arabia is now in, and there's a Brazil is in, and there's a lineup of countries aside from puppets like Argentina, the little Zionist little bitch here, right? There's a lineup of people, right? Countries joining this alliance, right? Joining this alliance. So China's Road and Belt Initiative and all the other initiatives, Ronnie. Russia was prepared. They don't fuck with Russians, man. The best mathematicians in the world, chess like there's nothing else. They will, they will fucking make you chase your tail. Everybody knows this, right? So they got together and said, we're going to build different alternate routes where we're not dependent on the sea routes, the navy that the United States has, and the United States has the strongest navy in the world, right? The maritime routes that the United States controls, we're gonna go around that shit. That's why this map here is extremely important because coming around here, going through the Suez Canal, that's controlled by the United States, right? And United States puppet, Egypt, Suez Canal. Yemen put a damper in that thing, right? So China, India, Russia, Iran, they've come together and said, what they're going to do is build a port there, go through land, right here. Okay. They're going to hit here, have pipelines, trade routes going through Azerbaijan, going all the way here, feeding Moscow, St. Petersburg, and slowly they start integrating the rest of Europe in there. The Western European countries are fucked for at least a couple of decades, right? But Eastern European countries are rolling in, right? Belarus, Hungary, Serbia, they're rolling in. You can bet on it. You'd be an idiot not to want to join this alliance, 
right? There, that's one of the reasons why this was important with Armenia and Georgia, with civil war and with Azerbaijan. Because, so keep this in mind, right? And also keep this in mind. Remember, we talked about this. With Nigeria, they tried to roll out the central bank digital currency and that failed greatly. They told Nigeria that they were going to build a pipeline going through here, going through Algeria to feed Europe with energy. Well, too bad. Niger, Mali, um, uh, not Senegal, but uh, what was the other country? Anyway, these countries, uh, African countries said, uh, no, I don't think your pipeline is going to go through here. By the way, France, United States, get the fuck out of our countries. That's what Mali and Niger just did, right? Who's in? Russia's in, right? So this pipeline, pipe dream that Nigerian puppets thought was going to happen as soon as they roll out the central bank digital currency is exactly what it is. It's a pipe dream. Ain't going to happen. So that pipeline's done, right? Their plans failed. Guess what? This connection is happening. The red line you see there, right? Now, let's do a little bigger version of that, right? This is the bigger version. And aside from the, the red line you see there, the, the, the trade routes and the pipelines that are being built, they're also going through the Caspian Sea, right? That's a great idea because Azerbaijan is not stable. Azerbaijan is an Israeli puppet regime, right? The odds are because Israel is going to continue to push this genocide against Gaza and build the greater Levant, right? And try to drag in the Western nations in this war against um, Iran, China, Russia, against the res axis of resistance, right? Because they need the West to come in there to instigate World War III. Azerbaijan will be dragged into that, right? Azerbaijan's hardcore dictatorship, hardcore dictatorship, right? So it'll maintain control, but if an all-out war breaks out, uh, we might see that destabilized. So that red line, that red line, the landline that goes through Azerbaijan might be disrupted. That's why the sea route hitting the port up here to go through the Caspian into Astrakhan and then connect up to Russia, St. Petersburg, and any Eastern European countries that want to join, it'll work, right? So that's one thing. We also have rail lines coming in through Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, going through Turkey to feed Europe as well, because Europe's still a consuming region of the world, right? Now, here's another map. It's a more colorful map shows you the same thing rail routes and ideally they want the rail routes right to go through and feed the rest of europe and remember china has a major port in italy right is that going to remain remain is, is are they going to keep control of it it really depends what happens with china because the united states is working towards doing the same thing to china as they did to russia since it worked so great for them idiots right which is one of the reasons they increased tariffs of electric vehicles from china a hundred percent why because an electric vehicle equivalent electric vehicle that is made in china that sells for ten thousand dollars made in the united states or europe or mexico western corporations are making them you would have to pay forty thousand dollars right so four times more three times more thirty thousand dollars right so china you can't compete with them on an industrial level right you can't do it so this is more shows that route the land route going through iran azerbaijan caspian sea feeding russia plus rail lines going through the land through afghanistan through uh tajikistan turkmenistan going through iran going through turkey and whatnot we'll see if turkey remains right if it doesn't go into full civil war Here's another map that shows you not only the rail lines that are going through the Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, 
those regions going into Iran that go through Turkey to feed into Europe. It's got the sea route going from Shanghai, Hong Kong, Beijing, all the way around India, Suez Canal. That That's not going to be as powerful as it was before, right? Because there's going to be a lot of land that's coming up. But it's also showing rail lines, pipelines going through Kazakhstan and Mongolia. And there's going to be more coming through here. So we have now supply lines coming to Iran. And Iran is the mecca of the Silk Road again mecca of the silk road again what it was in the past that's how fucking powerful iran has become right but when you see this you go oh wait a second you also have pipelines and trade routes and uh, rail lines right going through northern russia through this region let me bring this down again because i'm pointing right through this region to feed into Moscow and St. Petersburg and any Eastern European countries that I want to talk about, right? Here's another more detailed, right? Some of the planned lines, rail lines, and whatnot, right? Here's another map. Same thing, really. But it's just showing you different versions of this map that have been made to show you what's coming. Here's a, I like this one because it really shows what's coming out of Shanghai, Beijing, Hong Kong. Look at all those lines going in there. Some of them are pipelines, some of them are, are rail lines, right? So half the world minimum, half the world's population, 4 billion people, let's say, that live in this region, right? The infrastructure, huge chunk of it is already built. Huge amount of trade is already being done, right? That's half the world's population. Meanwhile, this part is chasing their own tails going, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? The sanctions and everything we put on Russia because we really need to go after China and make sure we want to balkanize Russia so China couldn't get the resources and cheap energy they uh, they were getting to continue their manufacturing powerhouse, right? To bring up, what is it, 300, 400 million people out of poverty so they become consumers. Our sanctions against Iran didn't work. They cut a deal with Iran to spy energy. They're working with Afghanistan. We couldn't start a war between China and India. They're working together. So this region of the world is trading commerce doing business building uh, building trade routes rare routes pipelines right to make sure everything flows seamlessly and guess what guess what a huge chunk of this trade that five years ago was done with the u.s dollar is now being done in local currencies or currencies that are outside of the us dollar right so all of this that you see all of this that you see in the next few years majority of it is going to be done without the us dollar without the us dollar emphasize without the us dollar without the us dollar this is devastating for the Western world, Western hegemony, United States hegemony, right? And what's taking this place? Well, electronically, they're doing local currencies. Russia is buying products from India and rup rupees, rubles, <laughs> rubles, rupees, right? And then taking that money, investing it back in India, investing in factories that are building products for Russians to consume. What a great decision, right? China and Russia are doing more than 50%, I believe, their trade now outside of the US dollar in the yuan. Russia, during the initial stages of the sanctions kicking in from the West, 
packed the ruble, 5,000 rubles to an ounce of gold. The Western world is trying to do the same thing to China as they did to Russia. And Russia, most uh, China most likely, is going to, if things kick up to the same level that they did with Russia, at some point, peg their currency possibly to gold or silver, right? Or both. Because recently, China has put out word to their citizens to start buying up silver. India is buying up silver up the yin yang. Same with gold, right? So this whole region with all that infrastructure going in, all of those trade going in, growth of economies here. These are not growth regions anymore. They're not, right? They're actually stagflation, going into major recession, possibly depression, right? Complete collapse of the Western world in terms of living standard. Growth here and done outside of the US dollar without the Western world participating in it. The doors are open for them to participate, but they're choosing not to participate. They're choosing not to participate. Not me and you, but our leaders are deciding that instead of joining this incredible powerhouse of economic growth, they want to wage war against it. Why? Because they don't want to lose power, right? They don't want to lose their hegemony, right? That's where we are right now. That's why all this shit is taking place. Because someone last stream came out and said, religion causes wars. No, man. All wars are resource wars. All wars are bankers wars. This is about trade. This is about commerce. This is about resources. This is about growth. Okay, these morons are here, are trying to create divide among us, among humanity, by saying, using identity politics, by using religion, by using some kind of voodoo, voodoo, saying that we are the chosen people, so we have the right to commit genocide on the indigenous population of a region and the Western puppets are deciding to back that shit up why because these idiots here the zionists believe they have the right to all the resources there all the water there all the land there guess what this here this region here all of this here all of this here china has come out russia has come out iran has come out pakistan has come out they have all said that Israel is committing genocide, Palestinians deserve their own nation, and Israel, the Zionists, have to be held accountable. Okay, I'm paraphrasing. Some of them might not have said it exactly in those terms, but that's exactly what they have said. China has banned its corporations from doing business in Israel, as far as I know. China, from what I understand, had 30,000 um, workers in Israel that were doing construction and stuff like that. 20,000 have already come back, okay? Israel, uh, I believe 60,000 Palestinians had work visas to go inside Israel to do construction and stuff like that. That has stopped. So Israel, the and Israel was planning on filling that void with workers from China and India and stuff like this, guess what? These people, these countries here are saying, no, we won't help you commit genocide. We won't fill the void. Fuck you, right? That's what's going on. And it's all related to this, right? To this. Why the fuck do they need a shit nation like the Zionist state of Israel? Why the fuck do they want to trade in the US dollar? Why would they? They don't need it. They don't want it. They don't want to taint what's happening to them with blood the way these idiots are here. Okay. I just wanted to give those that little bit of information um, because I was able to sort of you know, after dealing with some family stuff in the last few months, 
just stand and look at the map and try to put some pieces together and I dug up some of these maps easy maps I just did some search and brought up some of these maps and read articles caught up on my news and stuff like this uh, to get a better feel of what's going on to get a better feel of what's going on okay important keep this in mind keep this in mind that's one of the reasons I've been mentioning to people that uh, the only thing I'm recommending to people right now is gold and silver in regards to investing. Cryptos, if you had them, fine. At this prices, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, decentralize yourself. Decentralize yourself. Do not go into debt if you're in the Western world because we're collapsing. Okay. And the growth is happening here. Okay. Amazing times. Amazing times. There's a lot happening in these regions as well and these regions as well but i haven't had the opportunity to look at them as in-depthly as i have and i know about the middle east and what's going on in russia and europe okay man asia okay but all of all this is very small uh and it's very much in the early stages of development this is huge chunk of the work required to have this happen has already happened there's still more to go there's still going to be fires flaring up like azerbaijan this region stuff turkey but most of it is done most of the legwork has been done in the last two decades really 